For the following exercises, determine the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so I have two functions over here and I just have to figure out where on the graph are they increasing and where on the graph are they decreasing by understanding what they look like on the graph and seeing where the increasing values and decreasing values are. Okay, so I wrote down a little cheat sheet here to help guide you guys to do this problem. The first thing that you're going to do is you need to identify what the original function is. There are about six functions that you guys should know, you know, like the back of your hand, you know, you got it all the time and you can, you know, quickly know what those graphs are. This one obviously is not one of them, right? But there's a simplified function that you guys should know and you only take into consideration what is happening to the X. I don't care about any big values. I don't care about any numbers out here. If there was anything out here, I only care about what's happening to the X. So in this case, here's my X value. It's not being squared or raised to the third. However, there's a square root under it. I don't care about this plus four because that's part of a, a shift that was done afterwards. And this negative value, your original functions that you should memorize should all be positive. So I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. So basically your original function was a to the x equals the square root of x. And this is the function that you guys should know, you know, like the back of your hand. It's a pretty simple function. Just know that it always starts at the origin. So zero, zero right here. And then it only increases to the right hand side. So something like this. That is your graph of just the square root of X. There is no negative values for your X here. Okay. So that's the first part. Great. Now let's notice what horizontal shifts are going on. It's the horizontal shifts that tell you where you're going to be increasing and decreasing. So I'm just going to put that up here. If you want to find out increasing and decreasing intervals, basically you just need to know what your horizontal shifts are. And I wrote down over here, the notation that you'll normally see for horizontal shifts. It's going to be a number and they have it written here as H inside of a parenthesis. I write it a little bit, you know, easier for you guys to understand. Just know that if you have a parenthesis with X minus some number, you're shifting to the right. And if you have a number inside of a parenthesis with X and it's plus, you're shifting to the left. Now here, you might say to yourself, well, there's no parentheses here. However, there are secret parentheses, right? It's just something that you're doing or you're adding or subtracting with the function while the function's going on. So in this case, I have a square root and inside all of this is being square rooted. So the whole thing is technically in parentheses. So this plus four is your shift. Now, if the plus four was out here and there was no square root, it would not be part of the horizontal shifts. That would be a vertical shift. But here we are shifting. It's a plus, right? So down here, pluses means that you shift to the left. So we are shifting, we'll say four units to the left. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So that means I gotta go four numbers, one, two, three, four, to the left, right? So that means that my start doesn't start here, it will start all the way over here. And then it's the same graph because technically now it's X plus four and that is something like that. However, there's a negative here and this is super important. Negative, whenever you have a negative sign affecting your X value, that is a flip. So negative X means that you're flipping the graph and you flip the graph along the 
y-axis. So it's basically like a piece of paper, right? You have a piece of paper and then you flip it over this way, right? Kind of like how you flip your hand back and forth. That's the same thing that we're doing here. I'm literally going to take this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this and flip it the other way. You see that? So now instead of it starting at negative 4, I need to start it at 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4 because of the flip. <sighs> like that. Do you see how it's flipped? You see how I took this guy and flipped it over and now it's this. It's basically the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of this to kind of just make it easy. Oop, that took away the line. We don't want to do that. So this part, and I'm going to just go like that. This over here is the new function. Okay. So now let's just take note. Where is the new origin? Well, not the origin, but where it crosses zero, it's right here. So I'm just going to put a line here. And as you can see, we always read graphs from left to right. It looks like it's decreasing. It's going down. But is there an increasing component? No, right? It doesn't kick back up. So is there any increasing interval? No. So for increasing, I'm going to say none. However, for a decreasing interval, let's see. We had to start all the way over here. That's negative infinity. And we come all the way down to 1, 2, 3, 4. And there you go. All right? So we have a decreasing interval here, but no increasing intervals. And this is your answer. Now let's try to do the same thing for this one. So always start with number 1. Identify what the original function was. Strip away all the big numbers and only go for what the x is being done to it. So here, I got a square root of x. I don't care that it's multiplied by 3. I don't care that it's negative 1. My original function was k of x equals the square root of x. And that one you should always know what it looks like. It starts always at the origin and just goes up a little bit, something like this. You don't have to be exact as to what, you know, where it goes off to, but just know where it starts for this type of problem. So this is the original square root of x. Now take note as to any horizontal shifts. Remember, your horizontal shifts have to be inside the parentheses of where the x value is. But over here... The only thing that is being square rooted is just the x. This minus 1 is not part of a horizontal shift. It's actually a vertical shift. So in this case, um, we don't have any horizontal shifts, right? This 3 isn't part of this x inside of the square root. So there's no shifts, horizontal shifts. OK. So I'm still going to keep it as my first graph, all right? However, you have to take note when you have negative values. Negative values, that's being multiplied by a function. Now, in this case, when you have a negative value that's being multiplied by the function, in this case, it was square root of x, this is flipping also the graph. However, this is the different way of flipping than the other way. This one is if you have a piece of paper, you flip it downward now. You don't flip it across. You flip it downward. So it's kind of like, you know, flipping your hand to you. So now this one, instead of flipping the graph and going this way, that would be flipping across. You're going to flip downward. You see that? And that is your new function, per se. We just have to be uh, general. We don't have to know the specifics. 
So, in this case, it looks like we only have a decreasing function, right? You see how it's going downward? So, is there any increasing function? Nope. So, still increasing none. However, what's going on with the decreasing function? Let's see, decrease starts at what? It has to start here, and that's at zero. Then, it goes all the way over here, and that's, you know, infinity. Can't really say when it's going to stop. So that's your interval. So just know that there's no increasing interval. It's just a decreasing interval. So it's basically the same for both of them, but just different intervals. Okay, guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. I hope um, you guys get down the flipping concept. I'm sure we're going to do tons more problems that has to do with flipping. So I got you covered. Make sure that you're on the playlist. If you're not, if you're not, get on the playlist. There will be a playlist button at the end of this video um, that you can click it and you'll see all of the videos for transformation of graphs. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next question. And if you're on the playlist, I'll see you in five, four, three, two, one. Bye.